what we got here is a sunburst guitar and Ringo's signature, George Harrison's signature, John Lennon's signature, and an unused concert ticket from August 18, 1966. Okay, where's where's Paul's signature? Right there. Oh, on the guitar. All right, where did you get it? At the Playboy Mansion. So what were you doing at the Playboy Mansion? Uh, well, I really can't say. I don't want to know then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got the memorabilia at a charity event. I'm hoping to get $25,000 today for my piece. Bare minimum, $12,000. I just don't have any room on my walls anymore, and I've got to do something with this. That kind of bass was really popular in the 1960s because there was some added electronics to it, and anything in the 60s that was high tech, they wanted to have on stage. Yeah. Young guys usually like the higher tech things, and as they get older, they realize that the low tech stuff is generally a little better. Um, Are you saying this because you're getting older? No, I'm just saying that. that from all my years of experience, that's what I've noticed, all right? So you think this could have been one of his personal guitars, or? Absolutely. Because if it was actually one of Paul McCartney's guitars, it makes it worth a fortune. I like to hear that. I mean, just Lennon alone is something pretty cool. I know his last autograph that he ever signed before he passed away went for 70 some thousand dollars. Awesome! <laughs> Love that. Beatles fans are insane. They will pay crazy prices for any Beatle memorabilia especially if it was owned by one of the Fab Four. If this signature is authentic and it was actually played by Paul McCartney, we're talking some big numbers. So any idea of how much you want for it? Well, I got it appraised in 2005, and it went for 25000 Okay. I'm looking at something like that. Um, do you have any paperwork on any of this stuff? Or? No, not really. All right. It was a charity auction, correct? Yeah. OK. A lot of times, some really rich guys drop off some really nice stuff there. Do you mind if uh, we have some people come in and check this stuff out? I'm game, you guys. So we got to figure out if all the signatures are real and if it was one of Paul McCartney's guitars. Right. All right, so I'll call Jesse and you call Steve. Sounds good. All right. OK, shop around and buy something. I'll be right back. <laughs> OK. I'm really hoping that everything checks out today so I could get top dollar. Sir Paul, awesome. So what are your concerns with this one? Um, I was just wondering if there's any way to tell if it was actually played by Paul. I mean, she got appraised for $25,000. There's got to be a reason why. Yeah, yeah. This is the style he played. Hoffner was manufactured in Germany. Before they were famous, they played in Germany and Hamburg and all that. Paul probably got one there because it was 30 bucks as opposed to 100 or whatever, you know, for the Fender equivalent. And he played those for a long time? He plays these still to this day. You know, the Beatles, probably one of the most popular bands to ever be. I don't think there's a guy in the Beatles that didn't leave his mark on rock and roll. I really don't. Was it played by Paul? You know, there's a couple things that would let you know if Paul had played this. First off, he played Hoffner's. Um, this company is uh, Jay Trucer, make a lot of replica stuff. Whether Paul played it or not, I would probably say Paul has never played this. Being he's left-handed, this bass is strung right-handed, it's set up right-handed. I mean, they didn't even take the little packing felt that they put underneath the bridge off of it. So they, it was probably for a charity or something like that. He probably just grabbed it and signed it and okay. handed it off. Is there any value because it's on the wood versus anywhere else? From what I know, it is better to actually have it on the guitar as opposed to the pick guard because guys will take pick guards and get them signed and later buy the guitar and just throw it on it. All right, thanks for coming in. Man. All right, man. Appreciate all right, it, buddy. Good to see you. If the signature on it's legit and all the other signatures in the display are legit, she's probably sitting on a pretty good chunk of change. I mean, two of those guys are no longer with us. You can't get their autograph anymore. The guitar wasn't played by him. We know that for sure now. But if all the signatures are legit, I, I think we really have something. So. My one friend is going to be here in a little bit. He literally knows everything there is to know about autographs. OK. So if they're real, he will tell me they're real, and we'll figure out a price. Awesome. Let's do it. Well, that was not the information I wanted to hear. So I hope that the signatures really check out. Wow, that's a great display. The Beatles. I think if you collect autographs, and you collect music autographs, and you want the best rock and roll stuff, you better start with one band, the Beatles. I just need to know if they're all legit. 
I know uh, Paul McCartney signing guitar is a pretty rare thing, so. Yeah, usually Paul McCartney keeps it really simple. Doesn't usually sign guitars in person, won't sign pieces of paper, usually keeps it to albums, CDs, or DVDs. Whoa, so then a guitar would be really out of the norm. Yeah. Okay, are they real? Guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up known examples of their autographs that are genuine. Some of the stuff I've actually seen signed in front of my face. So I go through each one. I'm able to determine if they actually signed this piece compared to my stuff here. Work your magic, man. So who's that? This is John Lennon, and I'm kind of trying to get in here and look and see what kind of style of signature this is, because the Lennon is the most difficult autograph to see here. Very lightly signed, not great contrast. This is Ringo Starr from 2003. And Ringo would sometimes add the star, and sometimes he would just not do it. Here we have a photo signed by George. OK, guys, looking at all this, comparing my examples of what I've got here, the known stuff that's real, looking at the piece here, in my judgment. Sorry, guys, it's not real. It has many problems and many issues. And one of the first ones I notice here is when I look up and I see George Harrison. This George Harrison signature is something I would refer to as, as almost spurious. It lacks resemblance to an actual autograph of George Harrison. George Harrison had this beautiful autograph. You could read every letter. When I look at George Harrison on this piece, I don't see George Harrison. When I look at Ringo Starr, I see the wrong angle. I see the wrong star formation. Basically, how he rounds things and how he makes a signature is completely wrong. Someone really didn't know what they were doing when they signed either of those guys. The one that really catches my eye is Paul McCartney. Getting Paul McCartney to sign a guitar is nearly impossible. Just a general, non-used Hofner bass signed by McCartney on the body of the guitar is twenty-five dollars to $30,000. Easy. In my judgment, this piece doesn't pass. And then the last one I look at is John Lennon. I have no idea where they came up with that style of signature. Unfortunately, when I see this piece, I see kind of a piece of manufactured memorabilia. OK, well. As they say, my work is done. OK, <laughs> Thanks, have guys. a good one, man. Good to see you. This was pretty much a no-brainer. If someone's appraising something at $25,000, $30,000, and they're taking half for it at a charity auction, you know there's an issue with the piece. You know what? Hang it on the wall and tell people it's real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Thanks anyways, guys. Nice to meet you. You too. I'm so pissed right now. It literally felt like I was just robbed of $12,000.